What's shaking bacon? Today is Friday, December 21st. Happy winter solstice to all. And before we get started on all of this stuff, I wanted to take just a couple of seconds to explain what's going on in the sky tonight. Normally don't talk about stuff that's non-fishing related, but this is actually pretty cool because not only is it the longest night of our year, which is why it's called winter solstice to begin with. It's the first day of winter, officially. But we also have a full moon that's coinciding with this. And you guys know what a huge, insane Game of Thrones fan I am. This is truly called the Long Night Moon. And it happens once every 20 years um, or so, give or take, where the full moon coincides with the winter solstice. And the cool thing about that is uh, it's the longest viewing portion of a full moon all year long. Um, obviously, when it falls on the longest night, it's going to be visible longer as long as it's up in the sky, and it will be. So this year is also pretty special because we have a full meteor shower spectacle going on all weekend long. So if you can see through the bright, blinding moonlight and you have clear viewing skies, go check out the meteor showers. You can fact check me on the old farmer's almanac. Um, it is a phenomenon that really only occurs once in a great while. Now, technically, when the solstice hits, the, the exact timing on that, when there's a full moon that happens at the exact same time as that, that's only happened like 10 times since they started cataloging everything back in 1793. But just a little fun factoid for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoy the weekend. It is the Christmas Eve, Eve, Eve weekend, or like our family down here in the South says, it's uh, going to be Christmas Adam, and then Christmas Eve, and then Christmas. So you know, obviously Adam came before Eve. So that's just uh, a little random fun fact. I hope you guys are having a fantastic holiday weekend, and Christmas is right around the corner. We've got a few pieces to show you. The shop is rocking, so I'm going to get right back to work because the desk is loaded up with all kinds of cool stuff over there. But got some stuff that I want to show you. Now, you guys all saw this on the spray session, but I wanted it cured now, and I wanted to show you how cool these eyes are. Now, I don't think that John is um, filling any more orders for 2018 because he has slam-packed book solid, um, which is awesome. That's a good problem to have, John. So jets and eyes really um, hands down the best eyes in the business when you're looking at 3d lures but i just love the way this came out um, we did this one special for a customer um, i've got a couple of others but i really just wanted to give him something that's really really cool uh, he likes this pattern so this one goes out to you greg um a few more pieces over here so i'm going to start with this little 1.5 dd in the winter they do key in on Redmore, and you hear me talk about that stuff all the time, but if you can get, like, a, if you guys are painters and you're, you're slinging airbrush paint, get some of that white, um, oh shoot, now I'm not going to be able to think of the name, the Pearl Essence, and you can find that, you can get a pearlized white paint, but that's a little bit different. There's stuff that you can get that's called Opaque Pearl Essence. Comart sells it, and then you can get the liquid acrylic inks through either um, Dale or Roney, which is the FW line, or the Dr. P.H. Martin, which is what I'm currently using now. And it just throws that really cool satin, high intense pearl sheen on these baits. And uh, just super happy with the way this came out. This is going out this morning, and it's got that little scrolled underbelly. It's got a scrolled top with a little bit of black, and then I shot that pearl over top of that. So if you wanna finish a bait a little bit differently, shoot up like a silver pearl over top of your colors at the very end before you clear coat let it dry and you're going to really love because it, it really it mimics those those scales in the water you know fish have a little bit of a muted color pattern to them when they're swimming through the water but this really keys in on it so super happy with the way that turned out also we didn't do that with this but i love these little scarab beetles this is the gold and black with the walleye chrome eyes and those chrome eyes you can pick out at dinger um, i've seen him do them there's probably a couple more out there but i, I get them from dingerbaits.com so check those out just a fun little scroll and this this is great in stained water this is a really really good pattern for stained water 
don't think, unless you guys are following my Facebook and Instagram feeds, which you're welcome to, um, I, I enjoy sending pictures out all, all across social media. I love how this really looks 3D. Uh, looks like the, the segments are folded underneath each other like they're supposed to be. We've got that crackle pattern on the side shells and on the back on the top. And this is, um, I'm starting to experiment. One of the other airbrushers on the Brotherhood page was recommending the uh, Wicked and Createx Bloodline airbrush paints. And man, are they cool. You get a little bit darker of a pigmentation in them and it really shines through. And we, we went ahead and shot that pearlescence on top of this as well. So, and then we just blackened the eyes that come with these. This is also that Dinger D D65 press. And really tricked out the shading on the bottom of the shell segments. So I think we're going to auction that one off either tonight or perhaps sometime this weekend on Bass Baits Buy and Barter. So go check that out. Whopper ploppers. Have you guys seen the 75s? How cool are these? This is that little tadpole pattern. This is one that I've done a couple other times. I love tadpole patterns, especially on these fat belly river to sea whopper ploppers. And you all know, because I preach it, there are some replicas that are good. There are some that are meh. Um, I have not found a replica for a whopper plopper that swims the way the whopper ploppers do. Um, I just haven't. So get the real deal on this one, folks. But this is a very simple slate chrome silver belly with those white bubbles, kind of mimic that tadpole. And uh, springtime, early summer, those bass, and, and, and if you guys are after different stuff like walleye pike, snakehead, they're gonna crush it. Because what fish doesn't like tadpoles in the spring and summer? Just saying, just my thoughts. Also did a Mardi Gras pattern. Man, I love these 75s. The, the, the 75 Whopper Ploppers are fatter bodied. And uh, talk about a wobble in the water. Man, I tell you what. Um, just fun baits. So this is the plum with a gold scroll, similar to this little guy back there. And that shad dot on there, just a key in. You can always tell they're genuine. Now, a lot of times customers will ask me to change the eyes. I don't. I don't in the River to Seas because I want to make sure that my customers understand that these are the original baits that when you flip them over, you can still see the Whopper Plopper insignia. I try to, anytime I'm using a real deal bait, a brand name, I try and keep the paint as transparent as possible so that they can still see the original insignia when that's possible and I will not change out the eyes they put these eyes on real well from river to sea and it's just gonna damage the bait when I try and do that but they have cool eyes anyways why wouldn't you want that river to sea logo on there so those are the 75s we also have a couple in 90s and again these are customer ordered this is that red fade to an orange and that, that traditional craw olive green with those craw dots. Very typical to see white dots on a craw. This is not, and I'm not sure if I've shown this one before. I probably showed it on my social media, but um, this is the Jacunda out of the Amazon from a fellow YouTuber's video. And I tried to match the pattern as close as I possibly could because I really like the pattern of the fish that was caught on that on that particular video. So I just I just think it's a, a slick bait. I love these thin body square bills to begin with. Um, man's are good baits. And then we got those those red. Now they call them pike cichlids but they're all very similar to the peacocks. This is that Jacunda. Going back to our Whopper Ploppers, we only have a couple more. This is that Dirty Brown. I 
and this would be great in uh, any of the stained lakes or impoundments, Potomac, when you really need that profile bait, but you want something cool. A lot of, lot of good shading with the paint and with the, uh, the black on those belly segments. And we, uh, we try and match the hatch around here as fast as we can, close as possible on these crawl patterns. I love spraying crawls. That's probably my favorite. I think um, it's, it's as much fun for me as the gills are for Michael Ornstein to, to spray. And this is the last one we're going to show you. I've got one back here. We'll briefly show you guys, but it's still drying. Um, during the quality check, I found a little bare spot, so I wanted to go back and epoxy that again. Um, but this is just a, a little bit of a plum head. I'm using that detail black magenta and a bone pattern. And you can always tell. Um, you want to make sure that your segments run real good for you. And this is in the 110. This is that Whopper Plopper 110. And that's it for now. I'm putting together some pretty cool stuff for the weekend. I know it's the holiday weekend. Uh, a lot of people are probably traveling. Uh, but you guys have been sending in tons of pictures, so I'm definitely going to be getting up uh, a shout-out and, and pictures for the subscribers that are also getting in and starting out with airbrushing or have been doing it for a while. So keep sending those pictures in. You can hit me up at uh, Jen Crevasse at JekyllBaits.com or you can uh, send pictures to either the Instagram or direct message me. You can send them to Facebook Messenger, uh, Jen Crevasse, or Jekyll Bait page. Either, either or is fine. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put that together. Hopefully get that up by Sunday or possibly Christmas Eve. Sunday's gonna be busy for me because I'll be with the family. But uh, wishing you all tidings and good cheer. And if you guys are wondering what I'm looking at down here, I try and show this every once in a while, just real quick. This is the Blick Arts book, and it's got a massive airbrushing section. They've got just about everything known to man under the sun that you can possibly need for airbrushing. Uh, that's where I get a lot of my stuff from. I'm not sponsored by them, but they've got some phenomenal prices. So when you can catch the, uh, it's a free catalog they send out, and they send out two or three a year. This one's actually for art educator, educators. Let's see if I can actually talk in full sentences, Jen. Um, a, a plethora of, now they are, I will say this, you can get better deals, sorry Blick, but you can get better deals elsewhere on your airbrushes. So hit the links below for that. I've got some better deals on that. But they've just got every, everything that you could possibly need in paints and uh, reducers and clears and everything. Cleaners. So there you go. And the catalog. Blick, Materials for Art Education. And comes free in the mail when you ask for it. Let's see if I can find the website. There you go, dickblick.com. We'll see you guys soon. Happy holidays. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Please don't drink and drive. If you're if you're drinking, that's cool. Um, I will probably partake in some adult beverages myself this weekend, but I will not be on the road. So please don't be on the road if you're drinking. Please, please, please. It's not about you getting pulled over. It's about the pain that you can cause yourself or somebody else. And that's my little soapbox because I love y'all. See you later, fish heads. Happy casting.